Does your brain work part to where ten. you? Yep. Part ten. This is part ten. <laughs> Does your brain work to where you're watching that? Okay. Like if I'm like if I'm watching coach. a game or and watching it, and then you're sitting there thinking, the, "Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that?" Coach space. Yeah, a little bit. I do that sometimes. I do that as a broadcaster too. Yeah. I've done that a lot in the broadcast booth over the years. Mm. Back even back when I was in college, I was doing that a little What's, bit. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know the name. The guy who's always the voice of the Razorbacks. You know oh, Chuck him? Barrett? Yeah, what do you think of him? He's oh, I, li- oh, I like him. He's, he's great. He's yeah. likable. He's fu- charming. He's got a good sense of good humor. Voice. Yeah, yeah. Great radio voice. Yeah. Great passion. Great energy. He's not Paul Eels. He's not Mike Nail, but I love it. Because I grew up listening to Paul Eels do Razorback football and basketball on TV and Mike and Mike Nail doing basketball. I, when I was doing basketball in high school, I, I kind of thought my style was a little more like Mike Nail. Than it was anything else. Now, these the, are before, you see, grow, grew up. So obviously these are your younger years. Yeah, these are my younger years. We got here from Alaska. Yeah, or whatever, yeah. my uh, Paul Eels passed away when I right right before the start of my senior year of high school. He got killed in a car accident mm-hmm. coming back from a golf tournament. And uh, Mike Nail, I heard him for years do Razorback football and basketball. He did football my senior year of high school, two thousand six, and then Chuck Barrett took over his voice in two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. So and then when Mike retired, Barrett did football and basketball, and uh, Phil Ellison does the voice of the baseball team. So I I was more Mike Nail. I knew those voices. I knew those names. So I grew up listening to Razorback stuff like that, though, too, because TV, college football on TV in, in the day wasn't as big as it was now, yeah. where every single game is broadcast every single week. Yeah, some, some folks with the radio voices, they're so over the top, obviously, and it's like, come on. I mean, I, I understand you got to have a radio voice, mm-hmm. you know, flamboyant, kind of here I am, boom, look, look at me. But some of them just kind of like... They, they go over the top. You need to tell a story and paint a picture in someone's head. Yeah. That's the thing. If you do that, you've got to check. You can do it. As long as you can paint a picture in the audience's head and go from there. Do you, is it like a natural thing? I mean, have you, it is. It, it, have it, you it, always kind of just been like, had this. It, it, it just felt so natural. It took me a little bit of time to figure it out. When I, when I first started broadcasting in high school, I, it felt weird, but yeah. It felt weird at first, but after a couple of games in, a couple of weeks into doing it, it just felt like, okay, I know what I'm doing. What's crazy is you're good at it. Yeah, like, it, 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 it was, it was a you, fluke. If I never saw you ever, okay, and I just hear you on radio sports things or whatever, whatever level, yeah, this is good, this is good. But then at the same time, you go, okay, getting up on stage, for example, no way. You would never feel comfortable doing that, like in front of, on a, in a play. Um, I, the the <laughs> acting it, thing for me, though, is I don't like memorizing lines. I'm so used to ad lib and improv. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And just being myself, I couldn't yeah. sit there and play a character. Yeah, it's got to be me. It's got to be me. Yeah, <laughs> I can't play. Watching the ball get thrown. <laughs> or doing variety show and stuff like yeah, that. Just yeah. being up there, telling jokes, being the host, just kind of being that though too. A lot of my, I'll tell you this though too, and I think I've admitted to this to you before. A lot of my influences for variety show, a little bit of Johnny Carson, but a lot more of it was David Letterman and Arsenio Hall. Mm-hmm. Those were my big influences. It was gotcha. more Letterman and Arsenio than Carson. Carson pretty much set the format up, but I took what I learned from Letterman as the train broadcaster being funny and Arsenio just being cool and hip and just yeah, sitting there yeah. talking. Sure. It was enforced, and that's what Letterman was. Letterman was a broadcaster. Arsenio was just a cool guy you could sit in a coffee shop and just BS with and have a good laugh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Because I heard you on the, I heard your voice before I ever we ever met. Yeah. Somewhere. I don't know if you were doing radio stuff or something. Else, Probably for the games for yeah. a while back or whatever. I just remember hearing that. Oh, that's you know that's good stuff. And then later on when you when you put the pit and then when you put the face to the voice, it's like, it's, it's like whoa, that's a dude. It was yeah, that's pretty cool. It, it's a really but you definitely got a definite radio voice. It's, yes. <laughs> it's a gift. <laughs> it's a gift. I don't know if it's a, I guess it is a gift the way I see it though, but I don't know really. I'm just, I guess I'm blessed somehow. I don't know why divine intervention or something or God or fate or time or something chose me, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. Well, that's cool though. You found your little, you know, your, your kind of special thing. It's yes. Like, hey, I got this. 